going to be working in the heated shop at my house. We've been working on this project for the past four years and we are on the final little bit. I actually made a list of notes. A little bit of backstory of what's going on here. So about a year and a half ago, my grandfather passed away. My grandfather was the one who owned this particular farm that we're on right now and my grandpa had a lot of amazing talents. He was an incredible man, but he was not very good at picking up after himself. He liked to keep everything. All of these shelves through here are just miscellaneous buckets of whatever, nuts, bolts, nails, screws, all mixed together. What I wanna do is once I get the shop cleaned out majorly for the first time here, I wanna pull everything away from the walls, then I wanna tin this entire building on the inside, then I wanna wire the lights all in, I wanna put a bunch of outlets throughout the whole thing, I wanna put airlines throughout the whole thing, I wanna put 220 electricity throughout the whole thing. So during the last four years, during my free time, that is exactly what I did. I cleaned everything out. I lined the inside with metal tin. And I even managed to get the electricity hooked up. So this brings us to today. Will I get the shop fully completed? Will I find the $10,000 my grandpa left for me in the shop? Let's find out. First things first, we have these 110 outlets along the wall and we have something hooked up in them wrong because you plug a phone charger into this, it blows the breaker. So some sort of weird connection in here, we gotta get fixed. And here in the back corner, we have the thermostat wire coming down. It's all loosey goosey. We need to get this zip tied down because when Roman put it up, he just, it's messy. What messy? You told me to do that. We have all these signs that have been sitting in side sheds for a long time. I think this one was at like a relax and realize meeting or something. I don't know, R&R. &R. And we need to get these hung up. I want to put the bowl one over. Or that's a cow. That's a cow. <laughs> <laughs> what makes it think it's a bull? <laughs> Well, I thought it had horns, but those are ears, and then it's got teats, so... That no, is these it. are horns, but cows do have horns. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Google Bull, it. Bulls have Google horns. Google it right now. Both male and female cattle grow horns. I learned something new today. Okay, next up, we gotta go out into the cold. Ready? Here we go. Over here in the big machine shed, we have some toolboxes that are no longer going to be in the cold. We have the big tall one here. This thing has been sitting here for the last 10 years. Look, it still has the wrapping on it. It is a brand new toolbox underneath. This is going to be going into the heated shed. And then we have one over here. That's the long and skinny one. This one is also going to be going in there. Now once we get it in there, then we gotta clean them out because they are full of a bunch of tools. I think we have 370 wrenches on the farm. We are going to find out after today. Okay, let's go back in the room. Whoa, careful meow. Over in this corner, we are going to be building a bench that is going to utilize all of our tool storage space. We need to come up with the design for the bench, and then we also need to order the materials for the bench. And not only that, we're gonna be putting this air compressor up on stilts, so we need to order the stuff for those stilts too. This is our garage door. See how we got a nice gap underneath? I can stick my fingers under it. I need to order a different seal for the bottom of this door, so that way that's all blocked off. Right now, pretty much all of our oil storage is in these 55 gallon barrels that are just miscellaneous placed all over the farm. They are extremely messy. I mean, just look at the top of this. I don't want this anymore. I wanna have nice storage racking for the oil, nice and easy to get to, so I need to order some sort of storage device for that today as well. We have these 220 receptacles that we installed the other day. We put them in wrong. Well, we didn't put them in wrong, we put them in right, but we have the wrong receptacle. We need a three-pronger, not a four-pronger, so we need to pull these out and replace those. Then last but not least, if we have time, we have a whole bunch of dead bugs, bird poop, and spider webs on this garage door. We need to get that cleaned up. And then last but not least, if we have time and the weather gets above freezing, we are gonna clean the mold and whatever green algae stuff we have growing on this garage door so that way it actually looks nice, bright, white, and vibrant. So that's what we got all going on today. We have our work cut out for us. It's gonna be exciting. We're gonna get right to it. Hey everybody, you're watching Call the Corn Star. Hey Roman, you like beef jerky? Oh 
yeah. Where did you get this one from? I don't know, some guy outside the gas oh. station just said, hey, I got some meat, you wanna buy it? <laughs> How much did you pay for it? I'll give you one dollar. No, he was kind of a small man, I just took it from him and ran away. <laughs> Kind of like bacon. It's good jerky. Yeah, I thought so too. So what, what, what are we actually doing? <laughs> I'm sorry, when, when you film it's like you pay attention to the camera so much that you're like everything else is a blur. Here, I'll send you the list and then you'll be on the same page as me. I feel like hang, hang up signs would be a good project for me for a day. There's like four signs. Well, that's right. So first up in the actual work we're doing, we just shut off all the breakers going to this string of conduits. We're gonna pull these covers off and look inside on the outlets. We think we have one of them where a landing is just not quite connected right. And so it's causing it to pull a bunch of amps and it blows the breaker. Literally when you plug a phone charger in, it causes this thing to blow. So we got something going on here. It should be easy to find. This must be one of the ones Roman did. There's one. Gee, gee, gee. See, I'm actually an electrical power tool. Those look good. So what we're looking at is just where these wires are coming into the outlet. We can, we're can we concerned that maybe some of the insulation got underneath of the actual copper part, so it wasn't getting the connection that it needed. But looking at all these, they look fine, so I don't know what's going on. Plug something in. I don't know what we did to fix it. The first outlet up there maybe had just a little bit of insulation underneath. That might have been just enough to not give us the connection we were looking for, but this is working, so. Step one done. Outlets are done, number two on the list. We gotta hang up the thermostat cables. So we need to find zip ties. Look at this, right between the oil filter for the Oliver and the first aid kit, we have zip ties. That's what I would be looking for them if I didn't know where they are. These are mold, these are like simpler tourniquets. You just put a zip tie around somebody's leg and <laughs> You need something to clip them off with? Yes, I do need I'm, some I'm gonna uh, get it for you. pliers, wire cutters. I think they are cold side cutters. Don't quote me on that. Leave it in the comments. I just brought these side cutters for you. Wire cutters, thank you. Yeah, side cutters. Wire cutters. Okay, we got that done. It, it looks better than it was, it's not perfect. Good enough for who it's for. Okay, we gotta hang up the signs next. So we have some deciding to do. We have the relax and realization. Did I say that right? Relax and realization sign. We gotta find a place for this one. Cool sign, I want this one somewhere in here. So next up we have the Goodyear tire sign. I found this in the back shed. It had like this much dust on it and I cleared it off and I was like, holy cow, this thing is cool. It's actually pretty good shape too. There's one little spot here where it got scuffed up and then something kind of scraped on it here in the middle a little bit, but that's a really cool sign. And this thing's heavy. I know this thing's like 20 pounds. Then we got the big bull sign. This one came from- It's a cow. Yeah, you can tell because of the udders. This one came from one of my college roommates. I don't think it was ever hung up anywhere because there's no holes on it. It's just a intact sign. So this one's gonna be going in the squat rack. That's gonna be cool. Hey Cole, I don't know about you, but cow doesn't motivate me very much. Then we got the bike route sign. This actually worked pretty good because we'll put this where the motorcycles go. And then whatever Toro is, and then uh, a Riken tire. We, we should probably clean these actually before we hang them up. That's, that's pretty dirty. Don't bend them. We got the three signs up now. We need to figure out where we're gonna put the Goodyear tire sign and the bike route sign. We got everything on the back wall, Goodyear sign up there. 
We got Toro, Bull Moose, and then the bike lane. So I think we're good on signs. Now we're gonna try to get this 220 hooked up to the right receptacle. See, that's a three pronger with the angles on the top versus the straight. So this is what we had in there. This is what we need. I love it. How you put the fake, fake screws. <laughs> well, they, they didn't have anywhere to screw into, so I just glued them in there. <laughs> I worked so hard to get these in here. Now we're pulling them right out. They do have some force behind them. <laughs> you know what's gonna be funny? When the welder comes, whichever welder you're gonna order, it's gonna have this end on it. Ricky Bobby! Wiring these up is not very difficult. We just have to put the wire into these little slots and then we just tighten the screw down on top and it holds everything in place. The hard part is the wire that we're using, it's almost as thick as my pinky and it is a bear cat to bend and get to fit inside of the little junction box that we're utilizing. So <laughs> we are doing our best. But the good news is the ones we had in there had four wires. These ones have three. So, hey, that's 25% less effort we have to push into Getting those things up and in there. <laughs> yeah, see, see, it's about the width of my pinky. Okay, yeah. Okay, like half the width of my pinky. If you just took the bone, if you took all the meat off my finger, it's just like the size of the bone. So Cole, what's next? We got outlets done, thermostat done, we got the signs done, we got the 220 done. Uh, arm wrestling. <laughs> Oh, oh, yep, yeah, that one didn't feel good. Next up, we're gonna try to get these two toolboxes inside the shed, and I forgot my gloves. Toolboxes are not new, been here for a while, but new to coming into this building, especially this one. This one's always been in the big machine shed. These are gonna be what's replacing basically everything over here. And these are gonna be located, one is gonna be beside the bench, this one's gonna be beside the bench, and then this one's gonna be underneath of the bench, actually. We're gonna build the bench over the top of it. That way we'll be able to utilize the drawers and stuff underneath. So it's actually gonna be pretty stinking cool when it gets all done. We gotta get these things cleaned out. This one's not as bad, but this one over here is a little, little rough. You know it's rough when you got gears mixed with ketchup packets and screwdrivers, but whatever that is. From 2016, it's a, a delivery sheet. All right, we got a work cut out for us. Trying to think of the best way to do this so that way we're not handling things a million times. I think we're simply just gonna take the wrenches. We're gonna make wrench piles on the floor. So 15 16ths will go in one pile, 3 8 will go in one pile, 9 16 all in one pile. So we're just gonna have a nice spread here. We're gonna take the pliers, screwdrivers. We're just gonna pileize everything. And then once we get everything cleaned up in these toolboxes, we're gonna do the same with everything that's over here. Get everything added into those piles. And then we can just kind of divide and conquer, then conglomerate everything together on what we feel needs to go in each drawer. That makes the most sense in my head, so that's what we're gonna try to do. Oh, sweet, a 1316, so we've been looking for these things forever. So the main heated shop has a gajillion half inch wrenches and a gajillion 916 wrenches, but literally like two 1316 in the whole thing. So when one is missing, then you're just down to one. So this is actually kind of a delicacy. Well, 
Well, well, well, it took a couple hours, but we got everything completely emptied out. Just look at this, nothing in them. We got the one, <laughs> it's just funny looking at this, still having the stuff on here. I don't know how we're gonna get all that sticky stuff off. It's not sticky anymore, but it's stuck on there. But we'll figure it out. But this thing is completely empty. This is what we found. Found a bunch of sockets. I don't know what we're gonna do with all those yet. That's all we found for adjustable wrenches. We found one pair of ice grips, just little odds and ends, little connectors, extension pieces for the ratchets. And then we have another bucket of some sockets. Then we get to the wrenches. A lot of 3 8 Whatever reason we have a bunch of 3 8 we only have one quarter inch wrench. So good thing we found that guy. But I mean, really not too bad for the bigger stuff. Wait, what the? We only have three 916s over here. See, this is the farm that there's no 916 wrenches. And once we get to the bigger ones, actually have a fair few of them. Not too bad. Then I also filled the trash can one and a half times. My dumpster is officially full now, so the garbage guy is supposed to come later this week and pick that up, because I'm sure we're gonna find more trash. I, I literally have no more room in the dumpster. This is kind of a preliminary view of how things are gonna look. This one is going to have the bench built over the top of it, so it's gonna be, kind of be hidden inside. It's gonna look just like a regular bench, but then the bench is gonna have drawers, which is this toolbox, and then this one is gonna be beside. So we're just gonna pick those up and then bring those right over here. Then we also have the old cigarette rack that used to be inside of a Casey's gas station. Yes, this is what has the cigarettes on it behind the register. But we're gonna utilize this to put all of our power, power tools inside of. We'll make little things here out of some four inch PVC pipe, then we can slide all of our power tools in it. Then we'll have a charging station and stuff here. We'll have all of our socket sets down below. So this is gonna be going over there with everything else. I just don't know how we're gonna configure everything yet. I would kind of like to take this and slap it right in the corner because from the door opener to the wall, I'm gonna have about this far to the door opener when it's touching the wall. So it's literally gonna fit in there perfectly. The only problem is I wanna take the air compressor and I wanna put it up on a stand so that way it's way up there in the corner. If I have that rack in the corner with all the power tool stuff in it, how am I gonna have a leg come down to support this air compressor? Cause this thing's like a thousand pounds. I don't know, I really don't know. But I do know we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna make it work. Don't know how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna do it. What are you listening to? It's a secret. Dobre ranok. Dobre ranok, actually come and join the party. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was my music. I couldn't dance without the music on the YouTube that I was listening to. Today the main focus is we are going to get the drawers of these cleaned out. We're gonna get the vacuum in here. We're gonna suck out all this dust and maybe pull up some of these mats. Some of them are a little grody looking. Yeah, they might not be as bad as I think. I know in that one they're pretty grody looking. So I'm gonna be working on cleaning this bench up. My goal is I want to be able to get rid of this whole green thing today. Basically all the bulk tools that are in this are going to go in that one. Roman has the heat gun and the putty knife and he is trying to get the cover off of this. You would think this would just come right off. But I suppose after being baked on there for like 20 years, it, it's probably stuck pretty good. Yeah, listen to the manual. It says remove right after the installation. Well, it was and never it... installed, so. <laughs> True. Okay. I'll give you that. Well, if you kept this on here, then I mean, look at all this dust that would have been on the stainless steel before, and now it's not. Power wash it. Much better than this permanent film. Roman and I are about an hour into pulling off the stickers that are on this toolbox. We made an observation. This side was facing the door of the shed, so it had sun on it all the time, and so did the front, and it's coming off rough. All the sticky stuff's there, and then it just peels off in little baby chunks. Like, literally, that's all you get at a time. So Roman's trying his best with the heat gun. It's a little bit rough, but then you get to the back side that didn't have any sun on it. Look at this. It just comes off in nice sheets. 
And that side looks great. So I have an idea. We're going to put this side facing the shop and then put the drawers facing the back so it's pretty. I feel like the equivalent of leaving a vacuum full of stuff is like leaving the coffee pot empty or when you run out of toilet paper just leaving and not getting another roll. That is the exact equivalent with the shop vac being full of dirt. I see what Cole meant by saying good luck finding room. I might have to do some dumpster diving. Right here. took a lot longer than it should have. Building break, we have about 30 acres we need to get plowed yet, and the ground's been frozen for the past few days. It's 44 degrees out right now, and they're talking warming trend for the next couple days. So I'm gonna see if this soil is thawed out enough where we can get in here and finish plowing. Uh, it feels a little hard down below yet. Too frozen. These things are gunked up pretty good after sitting in the machine shed for 15 years and just getting a ton of dust on top of them. So Cooper and I are gonna load them up on the trailer. We're gonna bring them down to the power washer and then hopefully we're just gonna try to get them nice and clean that way. I'm hoping with this other toolbox, it's got all that glue that's still stuck on there. I hope the power washer can just blast all that off. Well, that looks a lot better. We didn't quite get all the little sticky stuff off there, but I'm hoping we can get some gooey remover stuff. I don't know what you'd call it on there. And then we should be able to get it to look just like this, but look how much better that looks now. A brand new toolbox. The drawers even open up so much better. <laughs> We're gonna try our very best to load this thing up on the trailer. We had Cooper's help the first time. Now we don't have anybody's help. I have a wet trailer. Probably is not going to work the best, but we're going to try. Beautiful, beautiful. We got the toolboxes all power washed up while those are drying. Now we have a little bit of a runaround thing. We got rain coming for like the next three days. At this time of year, if we get rain, it's not drying out until springtime. I have about 30 acres that I need to finish plowing. So I'm gonna go hop in the plow. Zach and Cooper are putting equipment away inside the sheds right now. And hopefully when I get this plowing done, I can also hop in the high-speed disc later. We have a little bit more we need to get high-speed disc yet this fall, so. Here we go, we got our work cut out for us. What's the plan, boss? Uh, well, we're gonna put the fuel trailer back where it was. Right there? Yep, and then we'll unhook the grain back and put it by those containers. 
And then put the telehandler back in here. Put the other case tractor in here. Are you gonna this one or uh the other one that's over here? Oh. And then we'll put that in here for now until Cole uses it. And then we're gonna go down to the shop and work on Zach's pickup, his Kodiak. Wait, Cole actually doing something around here? Because all I see in the comments is that Cole doesn't do anything Cole? around the farm. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. He's just going. He's supposed I, I, to get... I didn't film it, so you can't really tell. How are you supposed he's... to get anything done going five mile an hour? Yeah. Hey, don't. Look at him go. Slow like a turtle. We gotta find the starting floor. I know there is a can in the shop. I moved it yesterday. Zach had a can over here. I'll grab it. It might be faster. Okay. Starting fluid. Hey, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. We're headed to the main heated shop, but before we get there, I need to check if Cole is actually working and see how that's coming along. We're just gonna supervise him for a little bit to make sure he's doing a great job. You're actually working. I'm trying to work. I was going to the main heated shop and I thought I better check with you. This is why my hands are so strong. I'm always on the steering wheel all day. Got these steering wheel hands. Do you think you're gonna get it done today? Oh, I'm gonna get it done today. Conditions are actually a lot better than I expected. I'm just spinning because we have compaction. I think there was an old building site that got buried up here years ago. So some of that deep down clay got brought up to the top when they buried everything. So when I hit those spots, the tractor did literally just the pull, the plow pulls hard and I just spin so then I have to lift up a little bit. Then when I get to the end rows where the grade carts always drive, you can definitely feel that too. You're cruising along nice and all of a sudden the tractors just spin and you're not moving because you're in compaction. I got from here down to the waterway left and then it's like 30 acres up there okay you have till midnight today that's right we'll do what we can i could use a hamburger with everything large french fries and maybe a strawberry malt where you've been all nice and yeah. shiny and look at you i Three years ago, this would be my third physical that I probably have ever had in my life. So, oh, my lights are on. So I just got back from having a physical. She said she's probably never seen a horse as healthy as me. So now I'm coming home to change into my work clothes and then I'm gonna go over and fill up overhead at Cole's place. We're gonna be putting new lights in here, the really bright ones like Cole's. And I didn't realize how, it's probably got all kinds of welding stuff on and there's a bunch of light bulbs burn out now but we're gonna be putting new lights in here and then we'll be telling you guys where they came yeah. from and stuff the Larson's the guys that we've been working yeah. with all along here super great lights there'll be new lights coming in here like over at Cole's place we'll be able to see put a new turbo in two years ago year did ago? you say yesterday a year ago oh year okay two years ago I think <laughs> But the album you can see it, the oil return line up here, oh, uh -huh. it's all oily. Either the gasket's out or it's loose, but I'm just gonna power wash everything here. And that's gonna fix it? <laughs> yeah, and that'll be good. So in Cooper's Dodge, he put these fancy flappers but he used just self-tapping screws and now with the vibration and all the load from these humongous tires, they started loosening up. So we're replacing 
the bolts instead of the screws but of course they are in super tight spot done your Dodge Fender is about to go now we're gonna change some oil real quick it's not gonna be filter and oil but oil alone Filter is next. Cheers. Oh, still going back and forth. We're on a new part of the field now. That area over there is what we plowed. That had a bunch of extra fertilizer put on it. Now this is my control. So we just have normal fertilizer put on this part, but I wanted to plow it so I could see, is it the plow that's causing the yield difference or the fertilizer? Probably like seven acres left or an hour and a half and then I'm gonna try to hop in the high-speed disc after I get done plowing and I'm gonna try to run late tonight because they're talking rain starting at like nine o'clock in the morning and we have uh, 320 acres or so that needs to be done yet and it's probably the last window of opportunity we're gonna have prior so we're gonna try to go as long as we can get as much done as we can when we get done is what we get done well the 30 acres took 12 hours so we didn't even do three acres an hour i see why nobody paused anymore <laughs> i was so slow part of it is that tractor is just not big enough for as deep as we're trying to pull it i should probably shallow it up a little bit but i wanted to get the stuff in there deep but we got done with what we're going to do. Now I'm going to run into the house and get some food and then I'm going to go back out with the high speed disc and I'm going to high speed disc what I just plowed. Mexican rice, hamburger of some sort, ground beef. I don't, I don't really know what you'd even call it and some green beans with crescent rolls. It's 11 o'clock. We've probably got three and a half hours of operating to go. Here we go. Burr, burr, burr. I'm going to turn the lights on in here. Yeah, right here. There we go, let there be light. Eastbound down. Okay, gonna be honest, no idea how to unfold this thing. Okay, that appears to be the up and down. There we go. I figured it out. Okay, we're cruising along. It's <laughs> definitely not the boppiest. I'm glad we're doing this now. And then we might have to hit it again in the spring. We'll see how it mellows out. But man. This thing's bumpy. Uh, a little less fuel efficient than I thought we were going to be. We are getting diesel in the 340. It's uh, 1.30 in the morning. I hope we got some death over here. Uh, I'm not seeing any in here. I'm on like one bar and when I run out of death then the tractor basically detunes itself down to like two miles an hour. I guess we'll see what we can do on death there. We're probably gonna end up running until that runs out. Uh-oh. <laughs> we got 40 acres done. We still got 30 to go, but I have no more def and it's gonna start raining in about 30 minutes. It's five o'clock in the morning. I'm an hour 21 for two days work day, so I'm gonna go in and shut my eyes for a few minutes. I was gonna go work out. But those coyotes seem kind of close, and I don't want to get picked off when I'm tired. You know, after the workout, it wouldn't be a fair fight. Me versus three coyotes, but if I was fresh, let's go. <laughs> I'll be back in the morning. You're actually working? I'm trying to work. We are at the point. Toolboxes are clean. They're nice and dry now. We are going to try to take bulk tool storage over here, and we're going to sort them out in the toolboxes now. I'm excited about this. We, we have always had just a clutter of tools over here. So the fact that we're gonna be able to find things inside of drawers is gonna be incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the day when Cole got his heart softened a little bit, not as 
much as I was expected, but I'm officially retiring this old hoodie. I got you a new one. <laughs> the Titan. Are you serious? I was thinking it's going to be a corn star. Well, it's you, you, stinking you're tiny. working your way up through the ranks here a little bit, so this is better than nothing. I should be grateful either way, so thank you, Cole. <laughs> if you'd like to pick up a Cornstar shirt for your own, visit cornstar.farm right below here and pick up your own. And he'll definitely be more special than I am. is we still have all this to go through good news is we have this rack clean we have this spot gone this toolbox is completely empty this toolbox if I can open is completely hey, clean hey hey wait that's my toolbox sorry this Just is Roman's careful. toolbox now <laughs> we got everything organized over here look at that no it looks so much better I had no idea we had this many vice grips on the farm when it comes to these projects, it almost always looks worse before it looks better. And this is definitely not an exception because all of this is a trash pile that we've had so far. I don't know what we're going to do with all these sockets. We pretty much have complete socket sets that we can carry around in little suitcases. All these ones are loose and it, you spend more time looking through these than when you just actually have a set that's completed and has all of them with you. So a set of impact sockets is like a hundred bucks. And by the time you get all these little separators, like one of these is like 20 bucks. So by the time I end up buying like 10 of them, I might as well just buy some socket sets instead. And then I can bring them anywhere and I have tools with me. I can keep them dry and from getting lost out in the field. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do with all of these yet. We got some deciding to do. It just feels like such a waste throwing them away, but if we're not gonna use them, we're not gonna use them. Then on our big toolbox, we are doing an excellent job of filling up the drawers. This is a poor example, but we have things compartmentalized into individual areas. So like this is an electrical tool drawer, and then we got the welding drawer. This is gonna be super nice because now when we come up, we know exactly where things are, and then when we find stuff that we need to put away, we know exactly where it needs to go. So this is gonna help make the shop so much more organized. I've been looking forward to this for a really long time. Looking good, guys. Have you done anything yet today? So Cole, can I throw this away? Sure. Have you learned the lesson how to <laughs> remove the wheel without the, the key, the wrench? I learned something new today after being around grinders for 20 years. I've always had to use these tools to loosen this thing to take off the grinder blade. Roman's like, what do you use that for? I never have to use one. And I'm like, why well, are you supposed to get that thing loose? Come to find out, you just grab it by the grinder wheel, it comes right off, no problem. I had no idea. I've always had to use this tool. If you didn't have a tool, you had to latch the thing inside of the vise to hold it, and then you'd get in there with a the screwdriver and a hammer to loosen that. Learn something new. Don't need these anymore. Check it. Roman and I came up with the realization we have a whole bunch of things that are going to go inside of the bolt rack and then we had other things like these lag screws and stuff that we were going to end up putting in the bolt rack. But then we discovered we have some liners that will fit perfectly inside of these drawers. So this is going to be super handy when we need them now. Boom, we just slide them out. Everything's super easy to see. A lot easier than in the bolt rack because if stuff gets pushed to the back, and a lot easier than the shelf because on the shelf, things tend to get stacked. And when things get stacked, then they get hidden. When they get hidden, you don't see them. Then you go buy new. And then before you know it, you end up with this much of everything. <laughs> fun game here and see how many dollars worth of wrenches we found in the shop. I think there's 370 wrenches here on the farm. We're about to find out. Let's assume that every wrench is $5. Some of these may be a little bit less on the smaller end, but once we get to the bigger end, some of these can get closer to $20. So we'll just assume every wrench is five bucks. So 
besides these wrenches that I'm looking at right here, that is what I have found so far. Each of these is a full nail that goes straight up. So, yeah, we had a lot of wrenches. Give me a little side profile. <laughs> <laughs> Got the metrics down below. Don't have nearly as many metrics, but we get into the standards, especially there in the center around the half inch, 9 sixteenths, 5 eighths, 11 sixteenths, 3 quarter. We got a gajillion. Wow. And we still have all of these adjustable wrenches. I've not counted these yet. 54. We have 54 adjustable wrenches. Drum roll, please. We found 557 wrenches, or $2,785 worth. They were all worth five bucks a piece. I know some of those big ones get closer to like $40 a piece. So we found some se serious amount of wrenches. Holy cow, 557. That's not even all of them on the farm. There's more in the big machine shed. And now that I'm looking over my shoulder, I see a pile that I have not looked through yet. So holy Tamales. Next up, we have the door to deal with. We got it cleaned up on the inside already. I need to get a new seal on the bottom. I ordered it, it came super fast. So it's gonna be this thing. We're gonna mount this on the bottom and we got some spots where I can stick my finger underneath the door actually in some gaps. So this is supposed to seal all those up. It's gonna make it a lot tighter in here. We're not gonna have air, cold air blowing underneath the door anymore. We're not gonna have snow blowing underneath the door anymore. And we're also not gonna have mice running under the door anymore, so. I don't know how this works. I got a whole big long stick of it. We'll figure it out. We got this bottom seal on. I just got it tacked on every 12 inches. We'll go every six once we get it finalized. We're gonna set it down and see what it looks like. Ready, Ellie, watch out. Let's see what we got. Huh? Turn the light off, see if we got any light coming underneath. Well, that's a lot better than what it was. Yeah. Got a little bit right there yet, don't we? Yeah, well that puffed down. It might. I think I can adjust the thing. That's why you're supposed to do it every 12 inches first, so that way oh, I can loosen it. Yeah, yep, yeah. and we'll loosen it up a little bit. Get rid of those. That looks so much better, especially this half. This half looks good. I maybe got one spot right there. Looks like got a little light. They designed this door kind of nice. I put a mark on an area where I got some air coming underneath, so I'm simply just gonna undo the screw and we'll just slide it down. Lower it to the floor just a little bit more. Look at that. No more light. We got just a real little tiny spot right there on the edge of the door, but I think the seal, once it kind of starts to take the shape of the concrete underneath, that'll seal up. It's, it's really small. But the rest, I'm impressed. Oh, got another little one right there. It looks like it needs to just settle out, but looks good. It gives us kind of a better visual on the outside of the door. We have really tight to the bottom seal over here. And then when you get to the other end, you can see how it starts to separate away. Then you can see the new seal underneath that's conforming to the ground. That's doing a really nice job. You're probably noticing all this mold and stuff growing on the door and how grungy it looks. That's what we're gonna do next. And we're just in time because it's starting to snow. Ew, gross. Mold. That doesn't even look like the same shed anymore. We got everything soaped, scrubbed, rinsed twice. So now we're gonna cap everything off. I got some white vinegar here and a spray bottle. So we're just gonna simply spray this all over the door, especially over that top lip right there where it seems like most of the mold wants to start as well as the bottom of the door, the walk-in door. We'll rinse everything off. And then I've been reading online, apparently this stuff is supposed to help keep the mold away. So we're gonna give it a try. I wonder if I gotta do this with two hands. start making some sense of this. We need to get these against the wall and then we can figure out the design for what we are going to do for a bench. Right, 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 right. 
out the last of the buckets, I just found some really cool stuff. This looks like just normal electrical items, but these are receptacles for the welder. And then we have some welder wire. We have a ground wire. We have boxes for the receptacles to go inside of. And then we have a 50 amp breaker. This stuff's been sitting in the shed for a long time, like probably 10 years. And my grandpa would have bought this. He was thinking of doing the exact same thing we just got done doing, which was installing 220 in the shop. <laughs> this, this, he bought this for the welder. And I needed one of these. So thank you, Grandpa. It's just cool to see that he was thinking it like 10 years ago. He just never got around to it. And we just got it done the other day. So the fact that I just found this now, this is kind of cool. But I'm not certain what he was planning on doing with all these lag bolts. There's a half a five gallon bucket right there. I had no idea. I was gonna finish the job my grandpa never got to finish and he got a different 50 amp breaker. So the one I need needs to look like this. So it's gotta have two sets of little terminals on it and we only have one on this. It actually, it doesn't even fit into this box. So I think he got a single phase one and we need a three phase one. So I guess we're, we're not gonna be able to use this one, but it was a good memory. So really cool. So here we have it. We have our entire list done, except these bottom two things. We need to design what we want the bench to look like and we need to get the materials ordered for it, but it's the weekend, so they're not open. And then our bulk, oil storage. After hours and hours and hours of sorting on the back shelves, I came up with an idea. We have column one of the shelves, nice and full of stuff. Column two, basically most of it's electrical stuff. And then column three, we're fairly empty. We got a little bit of grass seed on the bottom. I found a bulk oil storage system that will fit right inside of these shelves. So we'll just simply take the shelves out and it'll fit its low profile against the wall and it will be flush right with the front of the shelves. The most important thing for me is I just need to be able to slide the ladder in front of it. So I guess if it does come back just a little bit past the front of the shelves, we'll be okay. Cause as long as the ladder can move, I'm a-okay. Only problem is I went to go order it and they, for some reason, don't have an online service to be able to order it. So we have to go to a dealer and order from the dealer and it's the weekend and they are closed. So we're gonna have to wait on that too. If you are familiar with me, I am extraordinarily bad at predicting how long it's gonna take me to complete a project. I thought this was gonna take me like 10 hours to get everything sorted through and cleaned up. Well, here we are like almost 100 man hours in and I think we got it done. So let's take a look at our new found clean kind of shop. Starting in the walk-in door, we want absolutely nothing from this door all the way to the back shelf. And we're not quite there yet because we just had Edward's birthday party and we have some chairs and grills and trash that we gotta get out of here yet. But the big thing is we got our old bench completely empty now. We're gonna rob the vise off of this. Then this wooden frame is going bye-bye. It is an extremely wide bench. This bench is almost four feet wide. So when you have it against the wall on a 32 foot wide building, it takes up a lot of floor space. The new one that I would like to build is going to be about half this width. It's gonna be like 30 inches away from the wall. It's all just gonna stake out. So it's gonna be a nice low profile close to the wall. And it's gonna be a lot more practical actually because this one is so wide. When you get stuff on it, it's really easy just to push it to the other side of the bench. And then you just kind of work in the front 18 inches or so. And then all of a sudden you just get this big buildup of trash at the back. I've noticed that over the past several years. So that's something I want to try to eliminate with the narrower bench. So we're gonna pop this off and then we'll end up taking this bench out of here. The only thing we have not really done a whole lot with yet is the bolt rack. We Everything around it is associated with the bolt rack. We're not gonna be able to address that bolt rack either until we get this bench designed. So this is what's gonna have the metal structure over it, the one that's gonna be 30 inches wide and we'll have the vise and stuff here. But then we'll also have an area right beside it where we will have the bolt rack. I don't know the exact layout it's going to be precisely yet. This could be right beside the bench and then we could have the bolt rack over here or maybe we have the bolt rack over there and then we have this set up that's actually probably what we're going to end up doing there's a thousand ways to skin a cat and it's really easy to get into your head that you're going to be doing projects that you're simply not going to be doing at least that's the problem i have i feel like oh well, i need to get this set up in case i ever want to build an airplane down the road i want to have it set up so that way i can just walk right into doing that and i can have all the tools available for it it's like holy i'm not going to be building airplanes 
This is going to be more of a repair workshop, not a maintenance workshop. So the main heated shop is more of the maintenance workshop when we work on things for the next season. So all the oil changes, all the parts, everything down there. This shop is going to be more of a, hey, we're running something, something broke. We need to be able to pull it off, go get the new part and put it back on and have the tools to be able to do so. So that's why we're able to get away with having a lot smaller bench setup, a lot smaller toolbox setup, and a lot smaller shelf setup because we're not gonna be storing all the inventory of tools and parts and service supplies that we would for all the other equipment like what's down in the main heated shop. But otherwise, this pile of wood is going to be going into the house. The air compressor is going to be mounted up in the corner, so it's gonna be nice and out of the way up and over there. And then in our back area, I know it looks extremely messy, but it's really not. We just have the lawnmower and the motorcycles, and they just take up room, but there's nothing between them. So once we pull the motorcycles out, it is actually 100% clean on the floor here. And then we have the back furnace, which I'm not sure what we're gonna do with that yet. And as far as the actual working area goes, this is a pretty rudimentary layout of what we're thinking about doing. What is absolutely going to be on the end is this roll around setup. We have all of our sockets labeled in here and everything is super easy to find. And this is nice because we have a little bench on top. We can roll this out to the jobs that we're working on and then we're not having to walk back and forth for all the tools that we need. Everything is just right beside you. It, it's incredible how much faster you can get jobs done when you're not having to walk back and forth the whole time. And then we're going to have our steel bench. This is actually what's going to be on the inside of it. We, we are going to make an exoskeleton over the top of this and then we'll have a nice like quarter inch steel top to it and then we'll mount the vise to it. We'll have a back where we can hang up tools and stuff there as well and then everything will be bolted to the floor. Then if we really want to we can roll this out but otherwise it's just going to be sitting underneath. So bench is going to be located here and then I'm really liking the idea of having the bolt rack here. So everything's probably going to have to be slid that way just a little bit but we have more fine details to lay out with where the torch is going to be, where the welder is going to be, that kind of thing. But then this is just common tools that you never know when you're going to use them so you know we got snap ring pliers and look at all the scrapers we found that is incredible we tried to make the back shelves simply like long-term storage for something that you maybe use a couple weeks out of the year it's super handy to have so we don't want to get rid of it but it, we don't use it enough to have it take up main toolbox space so that is everything that we have back here on the shelves and we try to make everything in the toolbox that you may use on a, a once every three week basis or something over there. And I was originally planning on utilizing this back corner wall more, but the problem is nothing fits there. The bolt rack is just a little bit too wide for this to fit here and the bolt rack to fit there. And then same thing, we cannot fit this here and the bolt rack over there. So this is where we're gonna have all of our power tools set up and we'll have all of our jacks for tires and all that kind of thing sitting down here. We need to build all the little, we're gonna take some four inch PVC pipes and then we'll cut little slits in the bottom of them and then we can mount everything in here because that's a nice messy setup, but this is basically what we're thinking. So all in all, during the however many hours it took us to get this done, I'm guessing we found somewhere around $10,000 worth of parts and tools, which is really cool because we had a lot of stuff we did not even know was there. It was just buried in buckets and boxes, and now that we actually have everything separated out and organized, we can utilize it. The stuff that we have way surplus of, I've been giving away to some people and the stuff that is absolute junk, we are simply just getting rid of. That way we don't have to look at it anymore whatsoever. The name of the game is to make things more efficient around the farm. And if we have 89 16 wrenches that's taking up a, a whole drawer somewhere, that's not the most efficient that we can be, especially when things start getting mixed in with it. And then all of a sudden before we know it, we have a junk drawer. And then one junk drawer turns into 11 junk drawers. And then a, the 11 drunk drunk drawers junk drawers turn into hey we got a shelf in here that we filled up and then that turns into half the bench and then before you know it we have what the shop used to be which basically 10 feet both sides of the building and was just stuff sitting on the floor that was never going to be moved and never going to be utilized and then you get two things parked at the back something kind of temporarily parked in the middle and before you know it, you can only get a singular vehicle in the door by about that far. And that is the way this building has been for a long time. And I don't want that anymore. So that's why we've been making such an effort for that not to be the case. So we've been trying to make it as 
open as possible. But that's the reason for why we're doing it. We're just trying to become more efficient. And then once we get this stuff in place, systems and principles going, then we don't have to work on these things anymore because everything has a home. So when we find stuff, we'll be able to put it right away where it belongs. So then we're not spending all this time cleaning because just when we get done at the end of the day, we just spend five minutes putting our tools away. Boom, we have a clean shop. It's really easy to keep a clean area clean. And then we'll be able to take the time that we were doing all this organizing and stuff to work on other projects that are more productive. So we can start getting equipment ready earlier, or maybe we can spend that time learning new things. So that way we can do more things on the farm that we didn't know that we could do. And so that's where this gets really cool. It's a massive time investment up front, but it all has a purpose and things are coming together. This has taken me 11 years to get to this point. So it's, it's definitely not quick, but it's exciting and things are absolutely moving in the, in the direction that we're looking for them to go. But I am, I'll be honest, I'm a little tired of cleaning right now. So I'm gonna head in, this is all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.